Welcome, friend, to the Clifton Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is a congregation in Cincinnati, Ohio, where people from just about every corner of the globe gather together week after week to worship God, to fellowship, and to encourage one another. This is an incredible congregation made up of babies, little children, young people, young adults, adults and senior citizens. And it is remarkable that this congregation comprises of people from so many backgrounds, so many colors, so many walks of life, all united under one banner called the Lord Jesus Christ. That makes this church very, very attractive and appealing to everyone who comes through these doors. We would love for you to experience us either by visiting our website or coming to worship with us in person. And I assure you, you will not be disappointed with what you experience when you come here. We are a congregation that chooses to focus on four important aspects of Christian ministry and beliefs. We are a congregation that helps people experience the Lord Jesus Christ. You may be someone who knows very little or knows nothing about the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we worship as Savior and Lord of our lives. We would love for you to come by to experience this person, our great God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we have learned that when you come to a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you enjoy the experience and we think you would be fascinated by that. But not only that, we would love for you to come and learn how to imitate the Lord Jesus Christ because there's no one better in this universe whom we would want you to imitate than the Lord Jesus Christ. How we treat people, how we live honest and ethical lives, all those things we learn from the Lord Jesus Christ. And lastly, we would love for you to be part of this congregation where we will help you to share Jesus Christ with other people. After all, there's no one better to talk about, to think about, to follow, to worship, and to experience peace and joy and contentment from other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, we make it a priority in our congregation to share Jesus with people. So, my friend, whoever you are, welcome to the Clifton Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I assure you that your experience would be incredible and your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ will be life-changing, life-transforming, not just for life on this planet, but for eternity. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I'm going to do a quick check-in. If you had a wonderful week, raise your hand. If it was just amazing, you saw God's blessings. Wow, this is amazing. If you had a horrible week, raise your hand. Everything went wrong. You can be honest. And it was tough. You did. I can understand that. And if you had a week somewhere in between, it was okay. Nothing too special. Nothing too bad. You can go ahead and raise your hand. Okay. So I have good news for every single person who raised their hand. And even if you didn't, God has something for you today, this Sabbath, here at Clifton SCA Church. So we want to welcome you if you're in person, if you're online. We're so glad you chose to worship with us. I'm going to pass the mic to Bernice, who has some announcements. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to cover, we have coming up on the 27th of April, so get your calendars marked, because all hands on deck, okay? Just putting that out there. We have International Sabbath, Okay. Um, we're asking that everyone who's bringing a dish, if you know, notice all the flags that we have up here, we're hoping that we can get a dish from every flag. So if you're here, that's for you. If you're online, that's for you as well. If you normally worship with us online and you're not here, come on the 27th. We want to see you, okay? And bring your special dish. Now, what we're asking is that between 9 and 10.45, everyone, please bring your dishes, okay? 
They're going to come to the school, which is in the back of the lot. All right, so if you need directions, someone will be here to give you directions. But bring your plates already prepared and ready to go. So if it's a hot dish, have it warm. We can get it warmer, but we're not doing any preparations. We're not doing any cooking, none of that, okay? So have everything ready to go. That is very, very important because we want everyone to come and enjoy themselves. If you're bringing fruits and vegetables, the same way you like wearing clean clothes on the outside, we want you to have clean food going on the inside. So wash them for us, please, okay? Um, fresh pineapples, oranges, have them cut up if you want them cut up. Wash the oranges off. We have a lot of diseases going around. Some people are very sensitive. We don't want anyone getting sick or ill, okay? Um, do we have on the screen, we need Demetrius and my numbers up on the screen, please? We're asking for help for um, everyone. Um, all the ministries, all the members of the church, if you are not a part of any ministry and you're not been doing any service, that's the day you can be of service to us. Help us out, okay? We need help getting the chairs and tables and everything together. So I need for everyone to be able to reach out to Demetrius for that. We'll have his number up shortly. We need people who are able to help serve, okay? So you'll get with me on that. My name is Bernice. Um, we need a lot of hands, guys, all right? We want to come and have the biggest fellowship that there is. We want to worship people from around the globe on this one special day. We do it once a year. We want you to come. We want you to be a part of it, all right? We want to show God how we love all his people, not some. Okay, so I'm asking that everyone please, please participate. Okay, um, we need help, like I said, we're getting ready. We also need help with cleanup. So you don't have to do both. We have a lot of people. So before you leave, please someone, if, can I get numbers up on the screen? No numbers? That's not fair. <laughs> We will be able to get that out to you, I'm sure, before the 27th. Numbers um, may be before the end of the service today, but we will get numbers to you, okay? So that you can reach out, reach out to us immediately. If you are making a dish, and this is very, very important, we have people with food allergies, they may be allergic to dairy, they may be allergic to nuts, please, we're gonna have cards for you, put the ingredients of that dish. If it's vegan, list it as being vegan. And to help us out so we know what um, country we're eating from, put that there for us too, so we know what we're eating, okay? If it's vegetarian, label it vegetarian. Because some want vegetarian, some want vegan, we want them to be able to eat what they're accustomed to having, all right? Okay, guys, the numbers are up on the screen. Um, for cleanup and preparation, call Demetrius, okay? Um, my, me, for um, getting together for setting up, take, setting up the um, school and everything, and for serving, reach out to me. Now, I'm gonna ask that you text me. It's easier for me to respond back to you via text Sometimes I can't call you, but I am very busy. But if you text me, I promise you I will get back in touch with you, okay? There will be further information coming before we get to that day, so we just want to get to free prep in advance. Thank you. Thank you so much. A couple more quick announcements. In addition to that International Sabbath, which is on the 27th of this month, so two Sabbaths from today, we encourage everybody to participate by dressing in clothes that represent your culture or your country. So that's some way we can all participate. So we encourage you to also do that. Additionally, our school, CCA, is having their spring week of prayer this coming week. So we're asking everybody to pray every day of the week for our kids that God will truly work in their lives and touch their lives um, because that's what this school is all about. 
for all of my Biederman seniors or 55 plus of this church, there's going to be an event. I actually have a flyer and there are some flyers to give out that on Sunday, April 28th from 1 to 4 p.m. here at the Biederman Center, there's going to be a paint pray and play party and you can bring a friend it's encouraged anyone Biederman seniors 55 plus you are invited and last but not least thanks to our sister church Shiloh Seventh Day Adventist Church there will be fresh food down in the Biederman Center today for anybody to take so if you need food if you know somebody who needs food we encourage you to go to the fellowship hall after church and take what you need this is such a beautiful thing our sister church has done Produce, fresh produce specifically, thank you. So we encourage you to do that. Let's bow our heads to pray to start off our service. Lord God, I want to thank you so much for your Sabbath, that you've given us a time to rest, that you, in your amazing wisdom, before the world was even created, had this in mind. We want to ask that we can truly commune with you today, that we can experience you, that we will be aware of your presence in this service today, God. And I want to ask that this will all be for your honor, for your glory, none of it for us, but all of it for you, God. Posture our hearts in praise and in worship and gratitude, God. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen.
I'll ask uh, you to find somebody to pray with. We're singing about Jesus as being our friend, and we should take our troubles to him. So we give honor and glory to him. Can you find someone who you're not sitting next to to pray with for two minutes? And then we continue with our song. Shall we all stand as we uh, close our worship?
It is now time for children's story. Would all the little children like to come up? Come on. Is there anybody else? Don't be scared. I don't bite. Happy Sabbath, guys. How are you guys today? All right, so this week, I've had a lot of fun okay. and a lot of stuff to do, but I finally got the time to bake something. Do you guys want to guess what I got to bake? Anybody want to guess? A cake? Mm, I wish I got to bake a cake. That sounds kind of good. Cookies. Cookies, but what type of cookies? Chocolate chip cookies. Chocolate chip cookies. And if I do say so myself, I'm pretty good at baking. I got y'all. Um, so I was baking chocolate chip cookies and I had to get a bunch of ingredients. I had to get flour, I had to get sugar, I had to get the chocolate chips. I had to get a whole bunch of stuff like eggs. Michaela, and Michaela, Michaela. Nice, hold on, I'm in the middle of a story. Anyways, I had to get eggs, I had to get flour, I had to get sugar, brown sugar, white Michaela, sugar. Michaela, Michaela, I need Michaela. to tell you something. Can you, can you guys hold on for a second? I'm speaking, yeah. Um, so I had to start baking, and I had to mix and mix and mix, and I had Michaela, to- Michaela, Michaela, Michaela. <sighs> can you guys give me a second? Can one of you guys hold this for me? One of you guys hold this? What? Oh, I forgot. You for... <sighs> okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I had to mix the ingredients. I had to form the cookies, put them in the microwave. In the microwave? Wait, no. In the oven. <laughs> Great baker, guys, I promise. Um, so Michaela, I put the cookies Michaela, in the... Michaela, I remember. Nice I'm in the middle of a story for the last time. Can you, can you hold on? So I had to wait for these cookies to bake, and it took Michaela, Michaela, so- Michaela, 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 I remember. What? You forgot your Pathfinder book at home. I forgot my what? Your Pathfinder book. My, my, no, there's no way. I, I packed my backpack with my change of clothes, packed my lunch, I packed everything. I did forget my Pathfinder book because it was in your room. Nice shade. Well, I should have been more kind about, you know, letting you guys talk and everything. But in my defense, you guys should have been more patient. Like, I'm in the middle of a story. You don't want to let me get to the best part where I got to eat my delicious chocolate chip cookies. I'm hungry. Um, but that kind of makes me think of a verse in the Bible about patience. This verse comes from Proverbs 15, verse 18, and it says, hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. And I won't even lie to you, Naishe, Neilan, I was about to have an argument with you guys right here. I should learn to be more patient, but so should you guys, because why were you guys bothering me in the middle of a story? Like, do you guys not know what patience is? Do you guys know what patience is? What's patience? Well, we're waiting to some, waiting for somebody when someone's doing something. Exactly. <laughs> See, I know that I have to be more patient with you guys, but you guys need to be more patient with me. I was trying to tell a story. Anyways, all this to say that patience is very important, guys. It's important when you're baking and it's important when you're talking with your friends. It's also important to have patience with your siblings. Anywho, does anybody want to pray for us? <laughs> I'll let two of you guys pray, all right? 
Thank you for this day. Thank you for the Sunday school. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you for being helpful. Thank you for my teachers. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for the healthy book Lord. Thank you for my family and family. Every love the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of life, for the good little girls today. Father, as we in charge, bless Pastor Jeba to, to, to preach the word of God and to understand. In Jesus' name, pray, amen. Amen. You guys can go back to your parents now. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Welcome. I loved that music. I'm waiting for the day the father will join the family and sing for us. Next Sabbath, where's the father? Yeah, he's sitting there, yeah. Next Sabbath, we're going to dedicate their young son. That is what our church community is about. If you have children who would like to be dedicated, whom you would like to see dedicated, talk to us. We'll be happy to help you with that. Anything we can do to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. I'm glad you chose to worship with us today. I want to make special mention of a number of our dear ones who are worshiping with us this Sabbath. Jerry and Lynn Bonner, our friends, welcome home. And then our dear ones, Lisa and Angela Haller, they are visiting. That is great. Good to have you all back, back home. You know, as Bernice said, we are a congregation of 30 plus nationalities. If you are looking for a home where you can feel at home, grow in your Lord Jesus Christ, in spite of all the messes in your life, you're welcome to consider being part of our church. As we always say, if you're looking for the perfect church, keep driving. Don't stop here. 
But if you're looking for a place where people are fumbling, bumbling, would love to grow in Jesus, you're welcome to join us. So our church family is growing. Today I want to introduce someone who is transferring her membership to our church. So where is Sister Virgie Jenkins? Virgilia, please join me here. Where is she? Oh, there. I was going to say, you know, she's so shy. She told me, don't call me up front. And I said, come on up, come on up, up here. They need to see you. Come on up. Yeah. Come on up, Sister Virgie. You know, this beautiful soul has been through so much in her life. And uh, finally she said, this is home, this is where I want to be. And we as a church family say, welcome home, sister. Amen. So who would like to make a motion in our church family? Okay, move, second it. All of us give Virgie the welcome wave. And because she's so shy after church, make sure you go and hug her. Welcome, welcome, good to have you. God bless you. Thank you, Ted, for praying for me. Where is little Ted? Prayed that, thank you, Ted. You know, I could preach and uh, you'll all be here for a while, but instead I have brought a better preacher to share the word of God with us today. I could say that he is pastoring the largest Adventist church in greater Cincinnati, but that's not why he's here. I could say that he's a great student of the word, that's why he's not here. I could say he has brought many, many people to Jesus. That's not the reason why he's here either. Knowing Dr. Brian Smith for many years, I've learned as I look at the lives and uh, ways of ministers, particularly in our Adventist church, that he is someone who walks with Jesus all the time. Very unassuming, very humble, and I'm attracted to people like that. And so today, Bryant and his wife, Amanda, welcome Amanda to our church, and their two precious children are here with us. And when I asked Bryant if he would come and share the word of God with us, he graciously agreed. So Bryant, please come, and the pulpit is yours as you lead us to Jesus. morning and happy Sabbath everyone. Uh, what a wonderful opportunity and privilege and joy it is to be in this beautiful house of God on this beautiful day. God truly is a good God and when I got up this morning and I saw the sun shining so brightly and the grass is getting greener and the trees are getting greener I'm just I love this time of year and I'm just so glad that winter is finally getting behind us and we can look forward to some warmer, more beautiful weather. I want to thank my uh, good friend and a man that is nothing short than an inspiration to me, uh, Pastor Jebba Moses, for his kindness, his leadership, and his friendship, and his mentorship to me. I just thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to be here. I have to say to you that you have a very warm and welcoming church family. Uh, when my wife and I and our kids came here, we were greeted with such love at every corner and crevice, and I really do appreciate that. I want to say to the church family, happy Sabbath. Those who are watching online, happy Sabbath. We're so glad that you guys decided to tune in with us today, and we are hoping and praying that you will be blessed by the word of God today. 
Uh, Pastor Moses gave me my assignment. He told me what the area of study is, and I think it is a wonderful area of study and something that I want to share with you today. Uh, I want to thank also, let me just acknowledge my beautiful wife and our two kids who are here. I just love the fact that they always come with me. Uh, she had threatened and says, I'm going to another church today. I'm going to take this opportunity to visit another church. And I said, no, I want you to be with me. And she, she kindly said, okay, I'll come with you. <laughs> so I'm so glad that she's here. And then uh, Breland and Simone, happy to have you guys here. And to all the familiar faces, it's just good to see you. Well, who's ready to hear the word of God? Can I say, hear you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. Before we open God's word today and before we take a journey in scripture, before we have an encounter with the divine and before we hear what he has to say to our hearts, I want to ask everybody who's watching online, those in the house of God, to do me a very, a very special favor. Would you at this time just clear your minds, your space, your thoughts of all secular thoughts and concentrate on Jesus Christ? Songwriter says, look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will somehow grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and of his grace. Think of the man who has died to save you today. Think of the Savior who lives to redeem you today. Think of the God who said, I will never forget you because your name is engraved in the palm of my hands. And as we think on our God today, it is our heartfelt prayer that our minds and our hearts will be so elevated towards heaven that someone will touch the hem of his garment. I don't know what your custom or tradition is here, but if you would please stand with me as we go to the Bible, to the book of Isaiah, and we're going to read verses 1 to 3. And I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. The book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 to 3. And here's what the Word of God says in Isaiah 53, verses 1 to 3. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. I want to invite you to pray with me and pray for me as we consider the sermon entitled, Beauty is Only Skin Deep. Beauty is Only Skin Deep. Let's pray at this time. Heavenly Father, it is not I, but it's Christ. Nothing do I have to bring, simply to the cross I cling. Father, it is my prayer that you would hide me behind the cross and a Allow not your children to hear nor to see me. Rather, allow them to see you high and lifted up, the Savior of this world. I pray, O oh Lord, that when it is all said and done, we can all say with one voice and with one accord how good it was that we've come into God's house. Thank you for both hearing and answering this prayer. Let everyone say amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of God today. Beauty is only skin deep. You know, in this passage that we just read, the prophet Isaiah is describing the coming ministry of our Messiah. And in his description, Isaiah paints a portrait of Jesus that is very unflattering. It is unlike any of the popular artist renderings that we are used to seeing of Jesus. Often when Jesus is pictured in paintings or portraits, he is captured as an outstanding specimen of a man. He is portrayed as possessing exceptional handsomeness and having features such as long, golden, flowing hair, brown skin, a perfectly kept and trimmed beard, and other features that cause him to stand out among men. Yet, 
in the book of Isaiah, as he is describing our Savior, he says that when he comes, when Jesus comes, he will possess, the word is, no comeliness. That word means that there will be no splendor, nothing magnificent about Jesus. Isaiah goes on to specifically say there will be no beauty about Jesus. Nothing about his physical appearance would cause men and women to flock to him. There, 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 there's nothing about him. He doesn't have a Colgate smile and he doesn't have all these things that will make women want to flock to him. He's just a regular guy. Isaiah is simply stating the fact that when Jesus comes to planet Earth, he will not and he did not stand out among men. When someone saw Jesus here on Earth, he appeared as just the run of the mill, sometimes even forgettable average man. There is an old saying, a very common saying that says you cannot judge a book by its cover. And this certainly was the case with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is not what men saw, but it's what they could not see that made him very extraordinary. In fact, Paul touches on this very line of thought in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. He says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be grasped. In other words, Jesus Christ of Nazareth was God in human flesh, but he did not try to remain equal to God when he came among us. Word of God said, he made himself of no reputation. He took upon him the servant, the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself, my Lord, and became obedient even unto the death of the cross. Here Paul is portraying Jesus as one who concealed his heavenly divinity in an earthly frame, came to this world, lived in poverty, was willing to surround himself with common men and sinners so that his real beauty may be seen. Think for a moment about the life of our Savior, born to peasant parents, birthed in a manger, not a palace, Poverty was his constant companion. His disciples were common, uneducated men. Common peasants were his most devoted followers. His, his death was among the most condemned and wretched. His church, for the most part, was made up merely of lowly, common, everyday people. This saints of God, this Jesus, this Jesus that we're reading about, that's being prophesied about, goes contrary to the ideology and image of our worldly standards today. Today we live in a world that idolizes the rich and the powerful. Let a CEO of a major corporation walk into this place right now and watch how all of us straighten up. Let someone with an important title or station come into this space and watch how everybody acts a little different. Put a well-known person on a flyer and advertise them as showing up to Clifton next week and watch how the gravity of that person's popularity draws in the crowd of idolization. Observe how everybody assumes that the rich are the smartest, they're the strongest, and they're the most virtuous. Many would think that Jesus, our Savior, many would look at Jesus, our Savior, and easily conclude that he is not a man worthy of devotion and worship. However, when it comes to Jesus, his real beauty does not lie in what men can see with their natural eyes, but his beauty lies in what he has done for you and I. It is in the things which Jesus has accomplished for you and me is where we get to see how beautiful he really is. So this morning, dismiss from your mind every artist's rendering that you have seen of Christ Jesus. Forget all the limitations of our sinful human flesh. 
in seeing Jesus merely as a genie in the bottle. Remove all illusions that you have, may have conjured up about concerning him today and journey with me today as we look beyond the man, beyond the carpenter, beyond the historical figure, and look instead at our Savior's face and what he has done for us because it is in the work and in the love and in the sacrifice of Jesus that we see how beautiful he really is. I want to give you four areas of consideration today before I take my seat on how beautiful and what it means that beauty is only skin deep. I want to talk about his pain. I want to talk about his payment. I want to talk about his plan. And I want to talk about our place. His pain, his payment, his plan in our place. First of all, let's look at his pain. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5, but he was pierced for our rebellion. He was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that you and I can be whole. He was whipped. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. He was whipped so that you and I could be healed. Now, of course, you can look at me and tell that I've never been pregnant. I don't know what this process entails. I can't even pretend to know the journey that a woman goes through when it comes to pregnancy. But what I do know from being a husband, a son, having women in my life and watching a lot of TV shows is that childbirth is a painful process. And I'm not just talking about the day of birth, but I'm, I'm talking about all the steps that lead up to childbirth. The nausea, the nausea, the back pains, the swollen feet and uncomfortable nights. You know, when our son Braylon was being born, he was born with a head full of hair. When I say he had a head full of hair, he had a head full of hair. And my wife complained throughout the whole pregnancy that she had heartburn. She couldn't lie down. She had to sit up for almost the entire pregnancy, sit up at night because her, she had terrible heartburn. And we found out it was because of all his hair, it was causing her heartburn. And so as Mother's Day approaches, saints of God, mothers all around this world are going to be quick to remind you about the pain they endured for your safe arrival. And as a result, mothers are esteemed, they are appreciated, and they are valued for their great sacrifice. But have we, have we paused to consider the pain that Jesus suffered at the hands of his own creation? Have we took the time to really journey through what a painful experience that must have been for Christ? to suffer at the hands of the humans that he has created. The Bible says he was beaten, scourged, he was spat upon, he was humiliated, the beard was ripped from his face, he was stripped down, he was nailed to the cross. Crucifixion itself, the death on the cross, is one of the most horrible forms of execution known to mankind. I don't have time to get into all the details of what crucifixion entails. But I just want to let you know as we think about these moments that he endured all of this so that you and I would not, to have, would not have to endure the pain that we deserve. Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yet millions, millions around the world have believed the lie of the enemy and the moment they experience any hardship, the moment they experience any discomfort, the moment they experience any pain, they are quick to blame it on a God who doesn't care about them. But only if we knew how much God does care. We would come to understand today that most of the pain we experience in life comes because we have traveled outside of God's will and God's protective care over our lives. The pain we feel is because we are not where God is calling us to be. The pain we're experiencing is because we are not obeying his Ten Commandment law. The pain that we're going through is self-inflicted and it is not from God, but it's from our own selfish desires. 
The beauty of Christ is that he endured pain, pain from his own people. You know, when we experience pain, there is usually a reaction, a visceral reaction. Stub your toe on the side of the bed and you'll start speaking in unknown tongues. Slam your fingers in the car door and you'll experience a solar eclipse all over again. Hit your funny bone on the kitchen table and you'll know what pain feels like. And you will sometimes, many times, oftentimes, react in such a visceral way to the pain that is coming to your life. But Jesus, when he suffered pain, he did not retaliate in any way. He did not say one word as pain is being inflicted on him. Isn't it amazing that the one who has all power in heaven and in earth would endure all that he did without even opening his mouth at all? Bible says in verse 7 of Isaiah 53, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, a sheep before the shearers, so dumb, he did not open his mouth. And when he did finally speak, it was to forgive and not to condemn. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What a contrast to the words and the sentiments we let escape our mouth when we experience pain. When someone causes us pain, the ugliness inside comes to the surface and we begin to spew out venom on the person that has hurt us. Be it our spouse and they cause us some pain and we say the meanest and most hurtful things to them. Let a church member uh, 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 cause you pain and you go home and you talk about them like a dog in the streets. The ugliness of our sinful nature rises to the top. But, but the beauty, the beauty of our Savior is that he shows us how we ought to deal with our pain by giving it to the Father. Father... You deal with them. Father, you forgive them. Father, I, I give them to you because they don't even understand what they're doing. The real beauty of Jesus lies in the pain that he's endured for our lives, but not only in the pain, but in his payment. The Bible says in verse 6 of Isaiah 53, all of us, like sheep, have strayed. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all. Listen to the word of God. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We've all left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him, Jesus, the sins of all of us. You know, back in the day, I used to be a road warrior. I used to love taking road trips, and I know I might look young, but I'm a little, I remember the days when, before GPS, I would just take out my road atlas, and I would map out my course of where I'm going. And on one such adventure, I took out my road atlas, and I mapped about three different courses I could take to get to my destination, and I set out on my adventure. And I didn't realize that the road I was traveling on was a toll road. By the time I realized what was happening, I was, it was too late and I was at the booth with absolutely no money to pay the toll and the toll attendant looking at me like, young man, you are wasting my time. And I didn't know what to do. As I stood there at the toll booth frantically looking for some loose change in my seat, I heard the car in back of me honk. And, and I, I just put up my finger to say, can you please just be patient with me? I'm looking for some money. And then I heard the car horn in back of me honk again. And I'm like, oh, man, it's going to be one of those kind of days. And as I looked in my rear view mirror, the, the, the person in the back was waving some money, and they, they, they signaled to me, I'll take care of the toll. Don't worry about it. And they wanted to get my attention. And they got out the car, came up to the attendant, and said, I'll pay for his toll and my toll. And she opened up the door and let me pass. In dying on the cross, Jesus did for us what no other person could do. 
He satisfied the righteous demands for the payment of sin. In him, we sinners, we guilty, we debtors, we can find forgiveness in Jesus. Bible says in Psalms 103 verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Bible says in Isaiah 43 and verse 25, I, even I, am the one that blots out thy transgression for mine own sake, and I will remember your sins no more. Jump first John chapter 1 verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, he cleanses us from all our sins. Somebody say amen to that. The world may remember our past. Satan may try to uh, 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 accuse us of our past. You might even remember your past, but Jesus has forgiven and forgotten all of our sins because of his blood. This is the real beauty of Jesus. This is the real attractiveness of Jesus. Now there is no more condemnation in his presence. Once you realize you have been forgiven, once you realize that you, uh, your sins have been forgotten, once you realize there is no condemnation, now that unleashes a freedom inside of you to love him and to serve him with all of your heart. That's why you'll see some of the hardest guys out there in the street come into the church and they have such a love and appreciation for what God has done. Pastor, you don't know where I was before I got to this church. I, I, I was in a bar every night. I spent, I spent time in jail. I, I've taken lives. I've broken hearts. I've done some dirty things, but God has forgiven me. That's why folk out there are more on fire than the folk in here because they have realized to whom much is forgiven, that same person loves a lot. Lord, you have cleaned my slate and my, 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 my debt was so big, but you washed it away. Now I want to spend every waking moment serving, serving you. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he has washed me white as snow. The real beauty of Jesus lies not only in his pain. It lies not only in his payment. But the real beauty of Jesus lies in his plan. I want you to listen to this. Isaiah 53, verses 10 to 11. Yet it pleased the Lord. Listen carefully. Yet it pleased the Lord. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. What? He has put him, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for, for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. The real beauty of Jesus is found in his plan. You know, many people struggle to understand God's plan. And because it does not make sense to our human reasoning, we abandon God's plan or we distrust the creator of the plan because we don't understand the plan. There have been many times I've told my son to do something and his number one retort is why? That doesn't make sense. I don't understand why you're asking me to do it, but as a father who is older, live more, and I'm dealing with more information, I direct him based on what I know, not based on what he can comprehend. And so I say to him, do this thing. He wants to know why should I do this thing. But while we are playing checkers, saints of God, God is playing three-dimensional chess. And he's moving the pieces of the board around. Why? Because the Bible tells us, this verse tells us, that it is our Savior's plan to justify many. This tells us little about his plan, but it tells a lot about his heart. I might not understand this plan. I, I don't 
I can't lie to you and say as a, a pastor, I understand why Jesus had to come and die such a horrific death, but I understand what he's trying to do. I understand his heart, and I, though I can't uh, 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 trace him, I can trust him. The Bible says his plan is to justify many. He wants to save everyone. No, not just the ones we like. No, not just the ones we get along with. No, not just the ones who fit in the mold of Seventh-day Adventism, but everybody. The Word of God said he laid upon the sins on his servant Jesus because his plan is to justify many. That's why we are dealing with difficult people in and outside the church. That's why God has not answered your prayers to get rid of some people in your life. Because his plan is to save everybody. And his plan doesn't always align with our timing. His plan doesn't always align with our comfort level. His plan doesn't always align with what we want. God's plan is to save everybody, not just the people who live at your house. God's plan is to save everybody, not just the people who come to this church. God's plan is to save everybody, the gays, the, the ones who wear tattoos, the ones who ride motorcycles, the prostitutes, the drug dealers, everybody he wants to save. And he's working on a level to save everybody. The good news is not that Jesus has forgiven and forgotten our sins, but that everyone, anyone who puts their trust in him will be fully justified. That's why he could say to the thief on the cross, this day, you will be with me in paradise. What? But he's never been a pathfinder, Jesus. What? He, I, I, I don't think he even knows what a Sabbath school lesson is. What? He's going to heaven? He's never even tasted a veggie link. But while we have our own criteria, Christ has another. And he wants to save everybody. His plan is to justify many. In other words, Jesus wants to see sinners saved. Listen to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. You know this text. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some count slackness. But the word of God says, but he is long-suffering towards us, all of us, every one of us, He's not willing that any one of us, he is not willing that any one of us should perish, but all should come to repentance. I was reading a story about Harriet Tubman, and she had the underground uh, tunnel, the railroad, and she would lead slaves to freedom. And some slaves didn't want to cooperate. Some slaves were uh, I can't make it anymore. And she would go up to them and she said, no, you're going to make it through this tunnel. She would go back, put her life in danger to make sure that everybody got to freedom. Jesus says, no man left behind. If we are lost, it's because we choose to be lost. It's not because God hasn't done everything in his power to save all of us. Jesus' desire is that all come to him for salvation. His desire is so much so that he has flung the doors so wide open that literally anybody can come to salvation. Listen to what the Revelation, Revelation 22, verse 17, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears come, and let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take of the water of life freely. Come, 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 and experience salvation. The plan of Christ is to populate heaven with sinners. Sinners that he has redeemed by his grace. Sinners that he has bought with his blood. I'm a part of that plan. You're a part of that plan. And when we get to heaven... It's because Jesus has saved and justified all of us. Don't we serve a beautiful Savior? His beauty lies in his pain. His beauty lies in his payment. His beauty lies 
in a plan that we don't fully understand. But finally, his beauty lies in his place, our place. Isaiah 53, verse 12. I will give him the honor of a victorious soldier because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels. He bore the sins of many and interceded for the rebels. You know, Clifton Church, my life has been tremendously blessed by what I call the law of proximity. That is, people in my orbit, people that I have access to, have created for me opportunities that I would not normally have. I call it the law of proximity. The people that I'm around, the people in my circle, the people that I'm able to connect with, have opened up opportunities and possibilities for me that I would not normally have if I was living life on my own. That's why, young people, it's important that you stay in close proximity to people who are where you want to be in life. It's important, family, that we are a part of a community that can bless your life. That's why I love the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church. It has been a blessing to my life and my family's life because of the law of proximity. I know that I have gone places because wherever you go, I can find another fellow believer in Jesus. And they'll take care of me and provide for me because I'm in close proximity. According to this verse, God the Father has rewarded the Son Jesus with a place of honor because of his great sacrifice. Because of his death and now resurrection, he sits now at a highly exalted position in heaven. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 22, Jesus, who has gone into heaven and is now at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers that now have been subjected to him. And so what the Bible tells us is that now our Father sits our, our, our Savior sits at the right-hand throne of Jesus in a highly exalted position. The Bible says right now he is in the holies of holies, interceding on our behalf, going over the books, reading our names, looking over our life's record, and pleading his blood on each and every name that comes across his desk. And because and when we are connected to him. When we are connected to that vine, that vine that gives us the life-giving power that helps flows through us, that helps us bear fruit, when we are connected to him, the Bible says we receive, we, 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 we benefit from the blessings that come from being connected to the vine. I want you to understand that one day, this exalted Lord, this, this Savior who sits in this place of honor, one day he is going to return again. But when he returns again, he is not returning as a baby. He's not returning as a humble carpenter. He's not returning as a poor guy from the streets of Nazareth. But no, he is returning now as a conquering king. And when he comes for us, when he comes for us, you and I will see him as the exalted Savior, the ruler of heaven and earth, the King of kings and, and the Lord of lords. He is not coming back to play any games. He's coming back to deal with sin and Satan forever. And those who know him can look at his face and say, Lo, this is our God that we have waited for. He has come to take us home. And when we come and when we are connected with him, we will share in his glory. I'm getting ready to sit down now. You know, there is a book in the Bible called the Songs of Solomon. It's a tale between two lovers. And at one point in the book, the bride is trying to describe her husband. And she calls to mind all the attributes of the handsome man that she is in love with. And 
she talks about all the things that make him beautiful. And then finally, she just exclaims, you're altogether lovely. That's the, that's the tagline from that, trying to describe his lover. And then she finally says, you're just altogether lovely. And you know, as we think about Jesus, and we try to find the words to describe him, at the end of the day, we just have to say, you're altogether lovely. You're beautiful. You're wonderful in every way. You show us the only reason we know how to love is because you've shown us how to love. You are the truly the most beautiful thing on this earth. I can't wait till the flowers start budding, and I, I can't wait till spring is in full display. But that does not compare to the beauty of Jesus. When we get to heaven, the Bible says that Jesus is still going to maintain the scars he received on earth. And every day we behold him, we're going to see his beauty. The nail-pierced hands and the nail-pierced feet and the piercing of the side. And we're going to look at him and we're just going to say, you are all together. Father, uh, Savior, Lord, you're all together lovely. We'll take off our crowns and we'll cast them at his feet and we'll say you're altogether lovely. There are not enough words in the English dictionary to describe how lovely, how beautiful, how wonderful, how gracious, how kind, how merciful, how loving you really are. And I'll need an entire eternity to say how lovely you are. God, I will worship you all the days of my life. You're altogether lovely. God, I will give you all the praise. You're altogether lovely. God, I will give you all the honor. You are altogether lovely. We serve a beautiful Savior. Not because of what your 401K says. Not because of where you lay your head at night. He's not beautiful because we pay off mortgages and we build new bu buildings and we have nice things and our kids have gone to college. Those things are wonderful. He's beautiful because he makes the rain to come on the just and the unjust. The sun shines on the righteous and the unrighteous alike. He's altogether lovely. And I want to introduce somebody. I want to remind somebody about this beautiful Savior. Isn't he beautiful? There's a song that says, his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, Jesus my Lord. Isn't he beautiful? He makes you fall in love with him all over again. Because whatever I'm dealing with pales in comparison to what he did for me. There is no complaint I can usher. He's altogether lovely. There's no, there's no issue I have with the courts of heaven. He owes me nothing. If God gives me nothing from this day forward, he's already given me way too much. He's altogether lovely. He's blessed me with life and health. He's, he, he's allowed me to come into this message, to know this truth, and my job is to share it as long as he gives breath in my body. He's altogether lovely. And this is the Savior who calls all of us, invites all of us into a loving relationship with him. There's no fear. There's no condemnation. Woman, where are thy accusers? I don't know, Lord. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Maybe there's somebody in here today that wants to have an encounter with this altogether lovely Savior, this wonderful God who is full of mercy and grace and love, this God who has the power to save, this God who has paid the price. You don't have to work for heaven. All you have to do is just say yes and amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done for me. If you simply just want to say, I want to give my heart and my life, I want to be in relationship with this beautiful Savior, why don't you stand with me to your feet as we get ready to pray? And I don't want you to stand because somebody else is standing. I want you to stand because the words of God has meant something to you. And you want to be with this Savior who is altogether lovely. All heads are bowed, all eyes are closed.
Heavenly Father, you truly are a beautiful Savior. I thank you for saving a wretch like me, unworthy as I am. Your grace and your mercy covers me. And Father, it, does, it just doesn't cover me, but you say, whoever will believe, it's for the entire world. And Father, help us to see your beauty in the, our, our everyday lives. Help us not to hold on to the hatred of this world, but rather hold on to the beauty that you show. Help us not to dwell in the negativity of sin, but help us to dwell in the joy of salvation. Help us to live and to walk and to exist knowing that you have paid it all. Father, I lift up your manservant, Jebba Moses. I pray that you bless him in a tremendous and mighty way. I pray that your mighty spirit, your love, your grace, and mercy will overshadow him and his wife and his child all the days of his life. May you bless this house, the Clifton Seventh-day Adventist Church. May thousands come into here and hear the word of God and be saved. May, no, may many know that you are loving, kind, and beautiful. And bless us now, Lord, we do pray. We thank you for your Sabbath day is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated. God bless you, church family. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing. Isn't it incredible that we serve such a beautiful Savior? You know, I heard some clapping, but I think we can give God a big round of applause for how much he loves us. Amen. Amen. You know, not everybody believes what we've just heard, right? Not everybody believes in a God who's beautiful and loving, who has a plan for us. Not everybody believes that God already paid for our sins and our salvation. Not everybody believes that he's got a plan for everyone to be saved and he has a place for us prepared, but that doesn't make it any less true. And pastor, I want to thank you so much for reminding us of that beautiful truth today. And I hope we can go home, take that with us and truly spend the Sabbath contemplating that. Amen. So today, if you are interested in giving tithes and offerings, we have a couple ways you can do that. We have our black box in the back, but also AdventistGiving.org. And now is our time for prayer. We're going to have um, Jebba's and a number for me on the screen. My phone is dead, unfortunately, so we'll have a different number on the screen for me. But please go ahead and text us your prayer requests, your praises, if you want to just thank God for, for his beauty and for his love for us.
We have had many, many requests, Melissa. Were you able to receive any or your phone is dead? I actually did. I was able to receive. There's a prayer for the seniors and graduates in school, um, anyone who's graduating this year, as well as some of our members, psychological, emotional health. Thank you. Many, many prayer requests coming from people for family members, for friends, for reconciliation and relationships, for forgiveness. One of our members, Vicki Coleman, her car was vandalized last night and she's not able to drive her car. We want to pray for Vicki as well. A number of our young people are beginning their internships. We want to pray for them, for God to speak to family members about this beautiful message of Jesus. Several praises, praising God that God did not leave us where we were but has brought to a very, very different place in our life journey. Some are getting ready for boards. We want to pray for them, and uh, we want to lift that all these people will know the joy of knowing that God answers prayers. We want to tell you, especially for those of you who are our guests this morning and online, these prayer requests are prayed for all week. So these are not just passing requests. So anytime you need for us to pray for you, just text the elders or the pastor, and we will do that. And following Pastor Smith's sermon, if there are some of us who say, you know, I would really love to know Jesus better, text us. We will help you. Because as you heard the message, heaven is for everybody who chooses to have a relationship with Jesus and it is possible. So Melissa and I are going to pray now, and when we finish prayer, two of our prayer leaders, Evan Sladrat and Ann Cater, will be in the front to pray for individuals who would like to pray with them. So please stay, take time, the lights will stay on as long as you want, and uh, we want to be of ministry and service to you. Let us pray. Melissa? Let's pray. God, you are altogether beautiful, altogether lovely, God. We want to thank you so much for who you are, your character, for how you deal with us, that you are doing everything in your power to save each and every one of us, Lord. We want to answer that call today, God. We want to lift up our hearts to you, lift up our lives to you, acknowledge that you are God, you are sovereign, and you are also fighting for us, and we'd love to continue with you on this journey that we're on. And if anyone here has not started that journey, God, I want to ask that you will give them the courage, give them the resources to start that journey, Jesus. I want to lift up to you our church here at Clifton. You've heard these requests, God. I know you already have had all of these on your mind. You already are creating ways and paths and plans for these to be fulfilled, God. But we want to lift it up to you, not only for the sake of our our requests, but also for our sake, God. Please change our hearts as we pray to you, as we lift up our requests. Help us to truly be changed by being in your presence, Lord. And we ask you to continue on behalf of all of those who have sent requests and praises, continue to make provisions for them, continue to guide them in their relationship with you, Jesus, and continue to bless our church, bless Pastor Jebba, continue to heal him, God, and help us to always see that you are for us, you make a plan, you make a way, God. We love you, in your name we pray, amen. And Lord, we lift all your people to you. Everyone who joined us for worship, online and in person, and everyone who would listen to this message sometime in the coming days, we pray that your spirit will touch each heart. And we pray, Lord, that just as we heard today, we will choose to be connected with you so that all of us can lay our crowns at your feet. Thank you for the ministry of Pastor Brian Smith, his wife Amanda and children. We pray your special blessings upon them as they continue to serve you. And Lord, we look forward to that day when in your kingdom, all of us will have a grand, permanent reunion with you and with one another. May your grace, may your peace, may your friendship and guidance go with God's people 
as we close out this time of worship together. In Jesus' name, amen. Just another reminder, as uh, was mentioned earlier, there is fresh produce downstairs in the fellowship hall, and um, Lorenzi and her team will help you. I went down plenty of fruits and vegetables, so first come, first served, go down, get some stuff, and uh, those things will not clog your arteries that we are giving you, so you can have as much as you want. God bless you. Have a beautiful Sabbath. Thank you.